How many times have you heard the saying, it's just the little things that matter the most? Well, I don't know about that in terms of video editing, but I do know five little tricks that when you add them to your videos will make a big difference in the overall quality of your video. So all of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So the first trick I have for you guys is all about making your titles and your logos and brand names that are overlaying footage stand out and look awesome. So in this example right here, I have my normal text overlaying this footage of a beach. Now they both look really cool and all that jazz, but it's not clear. You could go ahead and add stroke to the title so that it just pops out more, but it just doesn't look as nice. What you can do instead is go up to the effects library and click on the open FX menu right here. Then we're gonna grab the Gaussian blur and drag it onto our video layer. So now you can see that it actually blurs the background ever so slightly, but you can also see that it creates this black border around the edges of our footage. And we really don't want that because it looks ugly. So to fix this in our inspector tab, you'll see that there's an open FX tab that popped up. Click on that and you can see the different settings for the Gaussian blur. So go down to border type and change it from black to replicate. And then I'm gonna increase the strength of the blur by using these sliders right here. So that done, it helps the title stand out better. But if you just want to really focus in and make that title look all kinds of beautiful, then I got you. So what we're gonna do is switch back to the video tab right here and drop the opacity down to about 75%. This is gonna darken the footage behind the text. So now our text stands out way more. And if you really just wanna add that glassy look to your text, you can click on your text layer and then in the video tab, change the composite mode from normal to overlay. And this is gonna make that text look all glassy and stuff. So the second trick that I have for you is all about adding some life to video that is either locked off and not moving at all, or if you wanna use a picture in video, making that look lively. Because let's all be honest here, looking at a video with no movement is so boring. So what we're gonna do is in the inspector tab, we're gonna go down to the dynamic zoom and we're gonna open it up by double clicking it and then just hit this little switch right here, which enables it. So now you can see that we have two options here. We have dynamic zoom ease and we have swap. So when we hit swap, it's gonna reverse the way that the movement's going. Right now it's actually zoomed in and slowly moving backwards. Then when we hit swap, it's gonna go from wide angled to zoomed in. So you just have to choose the direction that you want to move. In this example, I want to move from a wide shot to a more zoomed in shot. Then we have this other option called dynamic zoom ease. Once we've picked the direction of our movement, I'll go ahead under dynamic zoom ease and I'll hit ease out because I want it to be fast in the beginning but then slow down and ease out so it looks all smooth and stuff. Now let's just say you just don't like how far it zooms into the shot. We can fix that. So right here on the left, we're gonna hit this drop down arrow and we can go and select dynamic zoom. So this green box is where our zoom begins and the red box is where our zoom ends. So I can change the overall zoom distance by grabbing the corner tabs right here and dragging them out or in or whatever the heck you want to do with it. So for me, I'm just gonna make this a really subtle movement by taking the end square and making it just a little smaller than the beginning square. So this works for all kinds of shots. It works for video, picture, whatever you want. Just adding subtle camera movement like this can take a boring picture and make it look just better. Now moving on to the third trick that I have for you, which is a pretty common one, reframe your shots. If you have bad framing, this will make your video just look so much worse. But we can also use reframing to hide jump cuts to make our video look a little more seamless. So on my timeline, you can see that I have a relatively wide shot of these two girls who are about to take a selfie. Now, it's not a bad shot, it looks good. But if I really just wanna focus the viewer's attention on these two people right here, rather than anything else going on in the background, I can go ahead and reframe the shot by clicking on the inspector tab, and then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in more so it creates a tighter frame. Then use the position X 
and Y to recenter the shot and frame it better. And as I said earlier, another thing that we can do with reframing is hide cuts. So what I'm gonna do is make a cut right here and then move forward a few seconds and make another cut here. Delete this middle section and put our clips back together. Now when we watch it, you can see that there's a pretty hard jump cut. So to hide that, I can go ahead and with this first part selected, if I just reset to zoom and reset to position, and now when we watch it over, you can see by changing the framing, it actually just hides that cut so much better and makes it look overall more seamless as if there was just a second camera there. So now your fourth trick to improve your videos has nothing to do with video, but rather audio, because audio plays a huge part in video. With sound, you have music, background noise, you might have voiceovers and all of the other stuff that could be in there. So what we're gonna do is something called sound ducking. So the overall idea of sound ducking is being able to smoothly adjust volume at multiple points in a single audio clip. So to do that on any audio clip that you have, there's this little line you can see right here. And when I hover over it, my cursor becomes these little two arrows right here. This line can control our volume. Find the point that we want the audio change to start. We're gonna hold Alt and just click. Now you can see that a little dot appeared and that's a keyframe right there. And now move forward a little and drop another keyframe where we want the volume change to end. Now what we'll do is grab this second ending point right here and drag our audio down. And you can see that between those two keyframes, it gradually fades the volume to the right level. If you really just wanna fine tune your volume, you can go up here to the inspector tab and under clip volume, you'll see that right now, we actually have a keyframe selected. So if I hit this arrow button, it's gonna just move to the next keyframe and then you'll see that it's at negative 17 decibels. We can grab our number and just drag it around and really fine tune that audio transition. And now if we wanna bring the volume back up, we can do the same exact thing. We can also just hit the diamond button right next to the clip volume and add a keyframe at the beginning point and then move forward a little and bring it back to zero and you can see that it auto keyframes. So this works really well for making sure that your music doesn't get too loud or if you're doing a voiceover making sure that your volume is low enough to where the voiceover is not lost in the music another thing you can do is if you listen here you can hear that our volume comes in and starts right out full blast and kind of like in your face. So we can grab this little tab right here and drag it in to add a little fade. And then we can also do the same thing at the end here so that it really just lets them down gentle, you know? And honestly, I would just do this for the video too because it just looks nicer to have the video and audio fade out simultaneously. So now moving on to my fifth and final trick. And honestly, this one is not little at all. We're just gonna dip our toes into sound design. Now, sound design is a huge topic in and of itself. So we're not gonna go super deep into it right now. But for those of you who don't know, the idea of sound design is adding sound effects to your video clip that weren't originally there. It just enhances the way your video looks, it enhances the way it sounds, and it just, it just, it's so nice to hear. So on the timeline, you can see that I have a waterfall and there is no sound at all. But in my media pool, I downloaded a few sound effects from Artlist. And if any of you are interested in Artlist, I have some links in the description that give you two free months with a one year subscription. So just check that out. So anyway, I'm just gonna drag down the waterfall sound effect that I have right here onto the timeline. And if you listen to it, you can hear that it is definitely a waterfall, but it is pretty loud. So we can go ahead and drag down the volume to about negative 19. And that just makes it sound better and more natural. Now, secondly, this video clip also shows a forest. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the sound effect that has like, you know, foresty sounds and birds and bugs and all the other stuff and add it below our first sound effect. And once again, I'm just gonna go ahead and quiet this down because you don't want sound effects to take priority over your video. They should be subtle so that they don't take the attention off the video 
Anyway, there you have it. Five little tricks that will make a big difference in your videos. So if you have a trick that I didn't mention in this video, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can improve their videos too. Anyways, as usual, if you want to see more content like this, there is a playlist on the top right here. And on the bottom, there's a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, Peace.